Welcome into the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show. I'm Jordan Hamm alongside Haley Stasiak. Took a couple weeks off, went into the new year, uh, but as we know, high school football never stops in this state. No, and there, it are, doesn't. there are plenty of storylines to get to. We wanted to break some of those down, uh, look ahead a little bit to uh, recruiting. We're going to do that later in the show, but also uh, plenty of coaching changes, plenty of uh, the coaching carousel is in full swing. And with that, we wanted to bring in Ralph Amsden from Arizona Varsity. Ralph, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys so much. Uh, so interesting, last night I was watching your Periscope uh, that you are known to do, uh, just kind of breaking everything down. Um, and you had some uh, thoughts on uh, coaching searches in, at the high school level in general. Um, and I just wanted you uh, to have the opportunity to share those thoughts um, just just on the, the topic as a whole. Well, I mean, I, I, some of the interest that I see in, in sort of the high school coaching carousel, it doesn't make that natural separation between, you know, college guys getting gigs that pay anywhere from two hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year to be, you know, assistants and uh you know millions of dollars to be to be head coaches and you know people who are who are full-time educators part-time coaches putting in full-time hours uh switching schools to maybe be in a better neighborhood or get a better opportunity or just to get their first opportunity um i just think that it, it it shouldn't really be looked at as something that uh that is for our own entertainment as much as it, it should be for the for the public good. For the most part, you know, these are public schools. Tax dollars go into it, and you just hope that if your kid participates in extracurricular activities, that they're put in a position that's that's the best for them. And you just want, uh, you know, good men and women in charge of, of young people in, in the coaching ranks. And uh, and so, like, the entertainment aspect of it is something that I've never really been completely on board with. Um but at the same time, like I, I completely get the appeal. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. So, so with that moving forward, we have some some jobs we want to talk about. Uh, not so much the uh, like, kind of like you you said the uh, the people that may be moving there, but more so just the jobs in general. So we're just going to run through a couple of those and want to get your thoughts on the various programs and the kind of the schools as a whole. So we'll start absolutely. out. We'll start out then with Mountain Point. Obviously, Norris Vaughn resigning as head coach there was a pretty big deal. As his successor comes in and they go through that process of hiring someone new for this job, what makes it so attractive? Well, Mountain Point has always been uh, a school that has been attractive to uh, great athletes, not just from inside the Tempe Union High School District, but you know there there are a lot of players that currently play for Mountain Point that live out where I live in Maricopa, that even live in Casa Grande. Uh, it, it's all, it almost has a pipeline into these other communities just because the culture that Norris Vaughn helped establish is one that, uh, that athletes are able to go there and, and, and accomplish their goals. Um, and, uh, and the other thing about Mountain Point that's always been really interesting is they have uh, just incredible offensive line play, maybe more than, than and any other school, at least on, on the east side, uh, you know, they, they've got these linemen on the offensive and, and defensive sides of the ball over the last five, six years that are all division one caliber. And I think when kids see that, they think I can go to this school and I can emulate a Kenny Lacey or a Truck Curtis or, you know, or, or Matty Polamau or, or Shamari Hayes or whatever else is going on. And they've always had an easy time getting quality assistance out there. And so, uh, if somebody can come in and plug into some of the environment that, that's already in place and not necessarily start over from scratch, I think that can be a job where you go in and win right away. Dick Banaszewski did a great job uh, taking over a, a very uncertain time in Hamilton, but they're now moving on uh, with a new coaching search, a national search. Um, they're still, you know, they're still working through that hazing scandal. They're building new facilities. Uh, do you think a national uh, level coach uh, from out of the state is better suited, or do you think a, a coach that's more familiar with uh, Hamilton and what's been going on uh, day in and day out is better suited for that type of program? Uh, I don't necessarily think that. I mean, well, the, the candidates that they've currently got in place, they interview half their candidates on, on Tuesday. They're going to interview the other half on Thursday. They've sort of given equal play to people who are out of state and in state. Um, there's a really, 
that what they're looking for is somebody who can come in, be a disciplinarian, get things cleaned up, somebody who's going to care about the kids and has a and has a proven track record of success. There's not a lot of super young guys that are interviewing for this job. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a situation where I think that they're not paying too much mind to understanding the historical aspect of, of Hamilton High. And, and for the most part, the people that are looking at don't really have any connection to Hamilton. Um, I would say that's the case for, for the overwhelming majority. They don't really have any, any uh, direct connection to Hamilton. They just want somebody um, who is proven as a mentor, who is proven as a coach um, that, that can come in and, uh, and make sure that first and foremost they're doing the right thing for their student athletes. And some of the candidates on that list, uh, just by name alone, are, are, are people that can come in and do that. And so I expect frankly the season in the next 10 days after they get the, you know, I think they have three interviews left on Thursday and, and we'll see if they move somebody in from out of state or if it's one of the, one of the local coaches that, that has had an opportunity to interview for the job. For over 30 years, Larry Fetkenheyer was the head coach at Cactus. This community, obviously for a coach to have that long of a tenor, they're going to be used to the way things are run. For the new coach coming into this position, what makes it unique about how fa passionate the fans are about Cactus football? Well, uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting – the only cure for, you know, the, the, the problems that are going to come out of following somebody who's been there since 1984 or how, however long it's been is to get back on the football field and, and remind people that they're there to support the kids and watch football and have fun. Uh, until then, people are really going to be thinking about, you know, who, who it was that, that, that's being replaced. Um, it, it's it's a great setup out there. The community is very passionate. Um, they've got a really really good running back that's replacing Bud Norris. They've got a, a great receiver and Isaiah Collab that um, that I think is going to make some noise this year. So there's players to rally behind, and um, I mean it, it's attractive because of that community support. But did the community support exist? because of the administration that was in place. We're, we're going to find out once the season starts. With Brophy, obviously last season it wasn't their best. With a program like this, what is it going to take for a coach to come in and turn things back around to get them where it was? Well, uh, Brophy can win. You can win at Brophy. Uh, Scooter Molander had 11 straight years with a playoff win, um, which is probably my favorite thing of any, you know, we've been school that isn't, you know, your perennial powerhouse, but he won a couple of titles, and he, he was a very good coach. I think things have changed in that there are so many more options for schooling. You can go to a charter. Um, if you want a more small environment, there's schools, you know, like Phoenix Christian or Valley Christian, and there's, there's Seton Catholic and, and just so many other um, great options to go to school. And so anybody that comes into Brophy, uh, the, the main goal is going to be to not lose anyone. You know, you, your, your, your main goal is to keep the kids that you have in place and to assure them that you're going to do what it takes to, uh, because if you're going to Brophy, then you, you know, you and your parents, you're definitely concerned about your future. You know, you need to bring somebody in that can say, like, I see your future for you. I see how to help get you to where it is that you want to go athletically, academically. Um, and once you get somebody in place that's proven that they can do that, I think that, that it then becomes a more attractive option for people who are looking for private school options for their kids. And so to turn it around, you need the athletes. And to get the athletes, you need to come in and show that you uh, are able to help them accomplish their goals. So Brophy's turnaround to me is going to be one that actually takes a couple of years. So uh, whoever they're looking for in a candidate to me needs to be someone who says, you know, I'm going to be here for at least five years and give you my full commitment. Chaparral is a school that just joined the coaching carousel with Coach Lewis resigning. Uh, they have a young, talented team. Conrad Hamilton uh, is a guy on that staff that was already the head coach, uh, but now currently as the defensive coordinator. Just what do you see um, how that might play out um, and just the, the type of job that that Chaparral job would be? Chaparral's interesting. I, I mean, you know this first hand. You cover them as much as anybody. It's interesting in that there are a lot of hands in the cookie jar out there. 
as far as parents, as far as people who want to help out with the team, as far as like money that backs the team and everything like that. Uh, what you need, I think, is somebody who understands and can navigate the politics of that environment and who's plugged in enough to get assistant coaches that will handle things like scheme on the offensive and defensive side of the ball for you. The only thing that Chaparral has been missing that other schools that have had a lot of success recently, like Chandler have had is continuity on the coaching staff. You know, people talk about, people talk about the demise and a slow demise of, uh, of Chaparral. And, and really what it's just been is a is sort of a lack of consistency in training these kids up as they go through the, the process. And so, you know, I've heard people say maybe it's time to clean house. But, you know, for me, I kind of go the other way and say, why not recommit to, to Conrad Hamilton? He's shown, you know, he left, but he did come back um, and get some assistants in there who are going to help develop these kids and that are committed to being there longer than just their kids are involved in football. And you'll see Chaparral uh, rise to the top, you know, the, the way that it was in, in prior seasons. So we've covered a lot of ground uh, with all, a lot of these uh you know, coaching carousel teams and, and things like that. What, just what's the most intriguing storyline to you uh, with all of this? The most intriguing storyline to me is a school um, you know, where, where you just go to see a lot of change. So you look at Chandler High School, and, you know, there are people who have been members of that staff that have gone on to have head coaching jobs elsewhere, whether that's Mike Peterson at Red Mountain. You know, the Highland job is filled by a former Chandler assistant, Brock Farrell. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of the assistants that are at Chandler were there before Aguano was the head coach. And even there before Aguano came on to Chandler High to be a teacher in 2002. Continuity is the most important thing in the world. And as you see these teams like Saguaro and Chandler, you know, the people always say, like, why do people want to go to these these schools it's just because they want to get recruited or, or maybe it's because they want to have the same coaches all through high school that you know that are going to be around there every single day supporting them and so i think anytime this whole coaching carousel um situation comes up you look at the schools that have had continuity and see that oh that's really where the places that people want to be are which is what makes cactus making a change one of the most perplexing and intriguing storylines of the entire offseason Ralph, great stuff as always. We appreciate you uh, hopping on and, and doing this deep dive with us. No problem. Haley Jordan, you guys are the best. All right, take care, Ralph. That was Ralph Amsden, Arizona Varsity, and as always, he... He just he, drops the knowledge. He, yeah, he, he <laughs> delivered, and he is so tapped in. Uh, A-Z-H-S-F-B is the Arizona Varsity uh, Twitter handle. Make sure to follow that, as well as Ralph... Chili, uh, Cody Cameron, that, that whole staff, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a couple guys, but that whole staff is just uh, so tapped in and cares so much about uh, the, the high school sports as a whole, uh, that, that whole community. What was most interesting to you I from think what Ralph said? I just think that continuity thing, what he talked mm -hmm. about there at the end. And with that cactus job, we spoke on AZ Audibles about how this is not going to be something that's going to be well received by the community when that new head coach steps in. Mm -hmm. So I think that's such a good point is change is hard. And for some of these schools that have had, like Norris Vaughn, for example, there too, for these schools that have had such tenured coaches here for a while mm -hmm. that have built up these programs and had success year in and year out, it's just the change of it, it's kind of scary. And yeah, kids want to play for a coach for four years. They're committed to it, and they want to do it. So, it, And that was one of the reasons that you look a, a level above. That was one of the reasons that uh, Ray Anderson said Todd Graham was being let go, was the, the con, uh, continuity on that coaching staff. Uh, right. It wasn't quite there. And you, you saw how the turnover, um, you know, kind of hindered that success. And it, it's the same thing on the, on the uh, coaching level. But uh, like he said at the very beginning, for, for much less pay and for uh, guys that are either juggling jobs outside of, of coaching or uh, teaching as well. So a lot of really interesting stuff. We have plenty of other storylines to get to. We're going to do that on the other side of the break. Uh, this is the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show.